hello, this is Humberto and this is the HVAC is my channel. Today we're going to be talking about heat load calculation, internal loads, lights. All right, so let's get into it. So this is mainly for commercial. So it, it, it has a little bit with residential, uh, uh, but it's mostly the general knowledge for commercial because when you're doing your calculations, you need to run the ventilation first and then the heat loads. But the heat loads, you can choose a, a program, right? You can choose Trace 3D, you can trace a carrier uh, app. So you have different options, but we need to understand how this works actually, all right? So as you remember in another video, we were talking about the heat loads. So in fact, my other video was called ASHRAE Heat Load Calculation Internal Loads People, okay? But now, since we're talking about internal loads, we're doing lights. So just to remember a little bit, what are the heat loads? The main heat loads, let's put in here heat loads. All right, heat loads right here. All right, so number one, the heat load comes from the envelope. Okay, we're gonna come put in here envelope. This is a little bit of review. And then the next one are for internal loads. So what do you have in internal loads? Internal loads, you have people, okay, people load. And then you have lights. That's the one that we're talking about now. And then we have equipment, equipment in here, equipment, right there. And the other one is gonna be infiltration right there infiltration infill hold on let's do this infiltration okay and then system system okay so now what we're focusing on is actually lights there we go okay so what information do we need to obtain the lighting load so pretty much you need to find out the lpd and where do you find the lpd you get this actually from tables okay you get this from tables and then in the next part of the video we're gonna find out where the tables are and what is lpd actually lpd stands for light lighting see lighting yes, there we go lighting power density let's put this in capital lighting power power density okay lighting power density and if you are talking about this lighting power density this is pretty much in watts per square feet that's all. So technically, if you have the square feet of the, the place, the location, you're going to obtain the wattage. And because you have the watts, you can opt, you can transform watts to bt per hour because as you remember, one watt equals 3.41 BTUs per hour, right? Now, what you have to make sure is how to obtain precisely this number okay so you need to find out this lpd uh, lpd okay lighting power density in order to find the lpd you need a step number one you need the location okay you need the location okay step number two you need the areas see like the room type see the room type and then Step number three, you just need the square footage. You need the area or surface area of the of the building. Area or, you know, square feet. Okay? Okay, so let's continue with this and let's check on step number one. So in step number one, for example, if you are in Washington, D.C., so let, we're going to make three examples just to just to see how, how, how to choose this precisely. Okay, so Washington DC, see if your project is in Washington DC, in other videos we saw how to find out which code is applicable. So in Washington DC, actually they have the DC energy code, see, 2017, which is based on the I, see, IECC, International Energy Conservation Code, 20, this was like 2015, right? 2015. 
So in other words, you have two options for Washington DC. You either have the option of using DC Energy Code 2017 or you can go to IECC 2015. However, I'm going to show you in the next part of the video how this differs a little bit more. We're, we're going to check also on New York City and we're going to check again on the IECC code. Okay, we're going to... So what, what my, my main goal for this video is for you to uh, make you understand how to obtain properly the LPD, which is right here. So I'm going to put in here something like um, in pink. See, for example, the table that you see on the right is actually taken for the New York City Energy Code. OK, so if you have the room type, which is a step number two, you're going to be able to find out what is your LPD. For example, if you have in here like a round table with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight people. See, we're going to put in here number of people eight. And then you have the type. This is conference room, conference room. You're going to be able to find what is the people load, right? And now, how do you find the lighting load? The light load you're going to be able to find because you you will obtain the LPD. You already have the category type, the, the room type, see? And then in here you have the, this applies to that, conference, meeting, and multi-purpose room. So what is the LPD in this case, for example? The LPD is 0 or 0 0.93, 0 0.93 watts per square feet. Let's put in here LPD equals 0.93 watts per square feet see so if you have that lpd now you're able to obtain the btus per hour we're gonna do that calculation in another video but now let's go to the second part and see what code says depending on location all right so if you go, to, uh, let's go to Google. So in Google, pretty much, if you want to find out the code, you usually go to upcodes right here. So in, under upcodes, you're going to be able to find upcodes, but where? So if the project is located in Washington, DC, for example, Washington, DC, then it says in upcodes in district, district of Columbia, Washington, DC, I can find that my the applicable is the DC Energy Conservation Code 2017, which is based on IECC 2015. OK, so let's find out what is the power density based on both DC Energy Conservation Code 2017, for example. So now, um, well, I already have that handy here, see? I, I have this, but I want to show you how to obtain this table. So if you go here and then you put DC Energy Conservation Code 2017, Conservation Code 2017, just put it in Google. You go here to the, to the first option. In the first option, actually, you're going to have access to this document right here as you can see. So 2017 District of, District of Columbia Energy Conservation Code and you have to go to page, let's go here, I already have this open. You have to go to page C102. Okay, so we're gonna put in here C102. Let's go here, C102, all the way down. C102, this is 84. C102, there we go. We have the page C102, C104, C105, C102, right here, okay? So what I did in here is I just uh, rotated the page. So if we rotate the page, see, I rotated all the pages. So we have this table which says, table 961, lighting power density allowances, a space by space method. So in here, you're gonna, find the different types of spaces for your building. For example, auditorium, convention center. The first column is that shows you what is the LPD. As you can see, LPD, watts per square feet. In this case, as an example, we're considering the, the conference room. So if we go a little bit down, it says in here, conference meeting multipurpose room is 110, 1.10 watts per square feet, right? Okay, 
So now, if you want to be precise, so if you're in Washington, D.C., use this number. Why? Because, remember, DC Energy Conservation Code 2017 is based on IECC 2015. So if we look at the 2015, it says amended. So amended means like it's uh, this is uh, the same, but it's uh, but it, it's a little bit the same but different. Okay. So IECC 2015. Let's go check on that one. We're gonna go online and then in the IECC, you find that code, and as you can see in here. Let's find out what it says for conference room. So for conference room in the IECC 2015, as you can see in here, 2015 International Mechanical Code right here, see? Energy Conservation Code. It says 1.23. So LPD is 1.23 conference room. So it's different as you can see. This is 1.23. And then the energy conservation code for DC tells you 1.1, okay? So now this is, uh, so if you want to be precise, use the 1.1. But sometimes people want to be, wants to be very conservative. So choose the bigger number, right? Choose the, this number right here. Uh, what is it? What is it? Right here, 1.23, all right? Okay, so in other, so so if you are in New York City, for example, you're gonna have a different table. And again, let's go check what it says in New York, New York City, the applicable codes. New York City. Okay, app codes. There we go. So if you go to New York City building codes, you go to app codes, and then we wanna find the international. We're gonna find the international energy conservation code. Okay, so what, what does it say in here? Uh, let's go here, the New York Sprinkler, Fire Code, Building Code, it says 20, 2022. It doesn't say in here anything about, there we go. So New York City Energy Code 2020, and it doesn't say what is it based on, right? So in this case, you go to the website, New York City Energy Code, and they have it available in New York City Energy Code. And depending on wherever you are in the United States, usually every big city have their own code. Every uh, county, um, you have to check your local jurisdiction, right? But if you are inter, if you are, if you live outside of the United States, you can use this as references, right? Something like to to have it as a reference. Okay, so in here, see, it says the applicable code is 2020 New York City Energy Conservation Code. You click on it, and then you have provisions for residential and commercial. You want to do commercial energy efficiency, chapter C14. And then you can go check on what is the applicable code or the table that you're trying to get from here, see? I have this open in here, hold on, right here, energy conservation code right here, let's do it again, there we go, right, so if you do that, see, table C45.3.22, you have a space by space method, method, you have LPD, watts per square feet, so again, as a, as a, we're using this as an example, conference room, meeting room, multipurpose room is... 0.93 that's the LPD lighting power density all right all right so I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did hit the like button that helps a lot and subscribe all right so in the next video we're going to be talking we're going to be making an example on how to apply this light power density lighting power density and then little by little we're going to be talking about equipment infiltration so that way you have a better understanding of uh, heat loads for commercial and then for residential Thank you for watching my video. Bye-bye.